Here, orbiting Saturn is a frozen marvel of the solar system. Welcome to Enceladus, the sixth largest moon of Saturn, a moon that has captured the interests of astrophysicists across the world and intrigued scientists interested in the search for life in our solar system. It is a frozen world covered in a thick icy crust and the 14th closest moon to Saturn. Although it is the 14th closest moon, it's the second closest major moon of Saturn, second only to Mimas. Thanks to the incredible Cassini spacecraft mission, we have been gifted an exceptionally close look at the moon. From far away, Enceladus looks like any other moon, plain and almost featureless against the black backdrop of space. It can be found orbiting Saturn in his E-ring, precisely following the plane of Saturn's picturesque rings. The E-ring is a tenuous ring constructed of micrometer-sized particles of water ice ejected by active geysers along the moon's south pole. It's actually a very extensive ring with an amazing width of about 2,000 kilometers, stretching all the way to the orbit of Saturn's second largest moon, Rhea. Enceladus has a 33-hour trip around Saturn, one half that of the further distant moon, Dione. Because of this, the two moons are in orbital resonance. This means it orbits twice around Saturn in the time it takes Dione to orbit once. Orbital resonance occurs when two orbiting bodies exert a periodical gravitational influence on each other. In Enceladus's case, this causes tidal deformation because its orbit will never become perfectly circular. This, along with pressure built up from the thick layer of ice, warms up the moon and at about 30 to 40 kilometers beneath the surface, the temperature is just right for an ocean to exist. There is plenty of evidence that a subsurface ocean exists underneath Enceladus. Plumes of water vapour have been observed and studied erupting from the southern hemisphere of the icy world. This is called cryovolcanism. From geysers along the southern hemisphere, Enceladus blasts out 250 kilograms of water into space every second at speeds reaching 2,000 kilometres per hour. The vast majority of these frozen particles reach escape velocity and actually form Saturn's diffuse E-ring. Without the sun's light shining through the ring, it can barely be seen. But it's actually the bluest object in the solar system, beating out both Uranus and Neptune. The plumes erupting from Enceladus create tendrils of water vapour that reach far off of the moon's surface. NASA's Cassini spacecraft orbited around Saturn for 13 years and originally had little plans for Enceladus. However, when the plumes erupting from Enceladus were spotted, astrophysicists had to take a closer look. Cassini was equipped with a device called the Cosmic Dust Analyzer, originally intended for studying the rings of Saturn. Using a fantastic feat of human engineering, Cassini was able to fly an astonishing 30 miles from the surface and study these plumes in depth. What they found in the water vapour excited scientists. Remarkably, amino acids, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and methane were found. These are the building blocks for life. On Earth, these substances are found all around thermal vents at the bottom of the Earth's oceans, with their own ecosystems surrounding them. Geothermal vents like these could be on Enceladus, and they too could have their own ecosystems teeming with life. Salt was also found in the water vapour from Enceladus, and the water beneath has been found to have an incredibly similar salinity to Earth's oceans. It was previously thought that Enceladus was water all the way throughout. However, its mass is greater than we predicted, signifying that it most likely has a core constructed of iron or silicate materials. This provides evidence that Enceladus does in fact have a differentiated interior, consisting of a rocky core, a saltwater ocean and a thick icy crust. Celestial bodies of this size don't normally feature differentiated interiors. Enceladus is a tiny moon, only about 500 kilometers across. Because of its tiny size, it's barely on the border of hydrostatic equilibrium where it's rounded by its own gravity. Moons like Neptune's Proteus are very similar sizes to Enceladus, but are not in hydrostatic equilibrium. The fact that Enceladus features a rocky core is extremely important. If geothermal vents were to exist here, it would have to come from a rocky core. 
nutrients and minerals along a rocky ocean floor were vital to life beginning on Earth, and the same would be on Enceladus. We know that thermal activity occurs on Enceladus because of the very existence of the plumes, and the presence of amino acids in the vapour also suggests a rocky core. During Cassini's 13 years around the ring planet, it was able to map the entirety of the moon as well as its thermal emission. The warmest portions of the frozen world, and where the jets erupt from, line up exactly with the geological feature of the moon, nicknamed the Tiger Stripes. They reach lengths of 130 kilometers and are two kilometers wide and 500 meters deep. They're believed to be tectonic structures in the moon's crust, caused by the movement of ice along the subsurface ocean, causing the ice to fold and collide into itself. Just by observing the surface of Enceladus, we can tell that portions of it are very young. There are almost no craters found along the southern pole, indicating that in relatively recent years, about a few million, the surface has refrozen over, erasing any previous craters. The North Pole, however, has fared much worse, with many more craters visible on the surface, so we can tell it's much older than the Southern Hemisphere. Apart from a few craters and tectonic stripes along the surface, Enceladus has few topographical features, and overall has a very smooth appearance. Its frosty surface actually resembles a common feature on Earth, glaciers. These images are some of the closest pictures of the surface. Deep glacial canyons and ridges can be seen in excellent detail. Enceladus also has a thin atmosphere. It's made out of the ejected water particles that erupt from the plumes and is nowhere near substantial enough to burn up asteroids and protect the surface. Material from these plumes have been known to rain down on the planet coating it in the particles, smoothing out the surface and assisting in giving it its spherical appearance. It's one of the brightest objects in the solar system, with the highest albedo of any planets, moons or asteroids. It reflects almost 100% of the light it receives and reaches chilling temperatures of minus 200 degrees Celsius. Sadly, Cassini finished its mission around Saturn in 2017 before plummeting down into the planet's atmosphere. Currently, there are no more missions planned to visit the icy world of Enceladus, but it would be amazing if we could visit it again. Mission proposals have been made, and some are even under review. In an ideal world, we would like to somehow travel underneath the icy crust and explore the subsurface oceanic world that lives beneath. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and feel free to comment any questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you see new videos coming out soon.